Hey guys, I'm going to start building my heat treating oven for the knives now. Um, got quite a bit of stuff, a few things have come in this week. My 1.4mm canful, uh, canful wire has come in. There's 30 metres there, which uh, should be enough for the coils in this oven. Um, and my micro switch which will turn the power off to the oven when the door's opened. Uh, and I went to get my fire brick yesterday. These are the lightweight insulative fire brick. They are type 26, uh, grade 26, sorry. They're good for about 1300 degrees, I think, 13 to 1400 degrees centigrade. And my first job yesterday was to kind of make these make these together because although they look pretty square since the purchase of my new surface table you put these things on and you see that they are not they are not flat and they are not square by any means so that one is kind of dished over so you put two together and you will see that they're also not very tight on that surface either So they're not, they're better on that one, but the gap isn't good enough for what I want, or shall we say. So what I've been doing is I've been, uh, first of all I've been flattening off these faces to get these perfectly flat because that will be the inside face of the kiln. So I've been flattening all them off and then I've been rubbing these together on the side faces on this surface plate to level these off and get these mate, mating faces as tight as I possi possibly can because I've no doubt that these bricks in operation will shrink shrink slightly even though these bricks have been fired they will still shrink slightly in operation so if you've got gaps when you start you're gonna have bigger gaps when you've finished so I made up a kind of sanding board with two Two old sheets off my linisher, this is just a worn belt which I cut in half and double sided taped it down onto a piece of plywood. That gives me a good flat surface, the piece of ply is perfectly flat, uh, put it on that base. And I've been kind of trying to select the best faces with the ones with the least chip corners because this will be the inside face of the oven. And See that now that face is now completely flat. So I've been doing that type 26. Been doing that on all of these. So with them all sanded flat, I'm now sorting out these faces. You can see the gap there is quite unequal now. This board is flat enough and then when I've finished on this board I just check them on the surface table. That'll do it. You can see now that they fit together almost seamlessly, beautiful. And they also sit dead flat and there's no movement in them at all. Once you've rubbed these together, you kind of form a pair. So if you want another brick, you then have to kind of add it to that one, let's say. Then you then use them two faces. You end up with a face something like that. So what I did for the base and the sides of the oven last night and for the top of the oven was I, I fixed these all together with this high temperature fire block seal which is rated up to 1500 degrees centigrade. So I spread that on and just like you've seen me sanding them bricks, I then rubbed each pair together so that the, the stuff was spread evenly and as thin as I could get it in between these joints. So I've got, there's three of the panels, so that's the base and the two sides. 
and then these guys here these are for the actual lid of the oven so this this lid will sit completely sit on top of everything and these these needed a brick and a half so I'm going to stagger the joints like that and now just like I did with the single bricks I need to rub, rub along these faces and make these faces together so I'll be doing that on here as well Again, I am now going to bond all them together into a solid mass. Definitely just help these bond. Only want a very thin layer of this, don't want a big thick joint of it. You know when they're together because there's so much suction now on that joint I can barely move them bricks the suction is so good on them two Hot solid. So give them five or ten minutes to grab and then I'll just put them to one side on a flat surface leaving 24 hours. So we've got the sides and base of the oven the internal dimensions are I think they're about seven inches wide uh, and I'm going to notch out the sides of these sides so that slides in this will comfortably heat treat four or five knives at once which is more than enough the length of the oven is 18 inches which again is, is more than enough for knives uh, I'm just going to use a handsaw to cut these Clean that up with a file now, that corner.
on there, give me a nice tight bond. Stop heat escaping. It's always better, I think, to overlap these joints. It gives an extra path for the heat to try and escape. And it makes the whole oven stronger, I think, as well. We'll do this side now. So it's down on the base. It's a nice tight seal now. And I've marked out where my elements are going. And I've just drawn these lines because I'm going to, that's the top. These elements are going to sit hopefully inside the channel and they won't need staples in them. So if I draw them like that the elements will kind of drop in and won't roll out. Uh, I've put the lines on it just as a guide to just to guide me while I make the saw cuts. Just sight me saw down the lines really. Because I'm only going to the depth of that tape there which is 10mm. The elements on this should end up about 11 millimeters across because I'm going and winding the cantle around an 8 millimeter rod. The cantle is 1.4. 8, 9, 10, so we'll end up about 11 millimetre, maybe 12. So I'm cutting these at 10 millimetre, the slots. Then I'm going to push a rounding file through them just to just kind of round the bottom out and somewhere for the cantle to just drop in. So it's better to cut this stuff a little bit smaller because it's so easy to file and shape. I've finished that particular part. I've made the, all the channels for the uh, for the elements to go in. Uh, just a bit of uh, <laughs> I think it was ten or twelve mil round bar uh, with some forty grit paper, double sided taped on. And that was all that was required. So we have. Our oven ready for elements. The back is done, the lid is done, and I am just going to wind the elements now. I'll further clean these little fellas up. As I have you know, as I actually do the elements, they may want to be a bit bigger these yet, I'm not actually sure. Um, I'm going to make the elements and do that now. So this is my element winding rig, an 8mm steel bar. I've put my cantle wire onto this old MIG weld, this little MIG welding spool. Just put a bolt on there so it'll spin. I've started to wind so this little rig does work. I got this off, uh, what's the name, guy, name of the guy, Veg, the veggie oil guy or something on, on YouTube. Uh, he, he showed me how to do this, so I have done it and from so far it looks absolutely amazing. Um, you want to check him out, it's literally a hole straight through both blocks. You could slot in that one and make the hole slightly bigger in that one. And the way it just feeds in and wraps around the bar. As you rotate it and you just actually allow the you know, you don't push or anything you literally just spin the drill and let the weight uh, and let the let the coil itself pull pull the drill forward so I'm going to carry on um, I've marked half of this wire with a bit of yellow tape uh, and I'm because this this thing's a meter long I think I think it's a meter <clears throat> Well, it's three foot, shall we say. So I'm going to carry on and just see what happens. I think maybe I should slow the speed down. That was slow.
So that is half of my wire. That piece of yellow tape. That's done a really nice job. I need all my wire winding. Problem number one now. I don't have enough bar. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to have to pull off that maybe try and slide the bar along and carry on winding guys try it see what happens see what happens so I'll show the element when it's done I'm gonna I'm gonna call that uh, quits for this for this particular section of this video it's gonna be way too long if I don't uh, in the next video I'm gonna show you the rigidizer <coughs> uh, I'm gonna make and I'm going to paint it on the inside of this oven, particularly where these elements are going, because I don't want that channel all chipping, chipping out. Um, <clears throat> and it's a it's a mixture I've used before this. There's some of you can mix mix yourself. They do uh, in the states. You can get a product called ITC 100, I think. Can't get it here. As far as I'm aware, there's nothing like it here. But the nearest thing I can make is a solution of water glass and some other bits and pieces so I'm going to make that going to paint that on um, <clears throat> then try and get the elements in alright guys see you in the next one thanks for my patrons uh, and thanks to all my new subscribers